Another almighty all-nighter and a deal on Greece just before the opening bell on Europe's trading week. How close to the abyss did exhausted EU leaders get? Was this the weekend that's the, that the EU saved Greece from, and the euro from untold turmoil? Or will closer scrutiny of the deal further expose a growing gap between north and south on this old continent, between France and Germany? And will painful reforms be enough to put Greece back on the road to solvency more broadly at a time when Britain is thinking of leaving the EU? As the standoff rages with Russia, has Europe proven itself worthy and up to the task? Today in the France 24 debate, there is no Grexit. And with us, uh, he's advised governments and the European Commission. Jacques Rupnik, director at Syrie and Sciences Po, the political uh, uh, science uh, institute. Thank you for being with us again here, here in the debate. Thanks for having me. Uh, joining us from Berlin, uh, Daniel Stelter, founder of Beyond the Obvious, uh, the think tank and author of Debt in uh, the 21st uh, Century. Uh, I suppose it's a, take, it's a take on capital in the 21st century, the best-selling book by a French economist, Thomas Piketty. It is, yes. Good evening. Thank you for joining us here in the, in the France Vent Get Debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter, our hashtag F24Debate. A deal at what price? By July the 15th, uh, Greece has to reform its VAT system, improve uh, the, the sustainability of its pensions, prove the independence of its national statistics agency so the government's fiscal data can be shown as reliable to the outside world, and also uh, create an independent tax authority that can automatically reduce spending if budget targets are missed. The measures that the deal includes are the measures that were voted for by Parliament, measures that will create unavoidably recessionary trends. But I have the feeling, the conviction and the hope that the 25 billion euro development package that we've achieved, the restructuring of the debt, but also the secured financing for the next three years will create the feeling for the markets and for the investors that a Grexit is a thing of the past. Uh, Daniel Stelter, uh, is it mission impossible or ha has the euro been saved? Well, you know, I would say it's a, it's a bad day for Greece, it's a bad day for Germany and it's a bad day for Europe. And let me explain to you why. Because for Greece, nothing was, was fixed as the problems keep on growing. I think the numbers are um, not to be taken serious because in the end, if you're bankrupt, you cannot grow your out of bankruptcy. It's impossible. Uh, Greece needs a debt relief. And clearly, it's not a very clever policy from the German side to push um, Greece and other countries for reforms, because even if you give money, you end up as being not liked. Just look at the uh, public discussion going on. So for Germany, I think it's the worst combination of everything which has happened in the past years, giving money and then still being blamed for it. And that leads me to the final point. In my view, it's been a very bad day for Europe, because for five years now, European leaders kick the can down the road and don't address the fundamental issues. We all know by now that the euro was a flawed concept. But instead of acknowledging it, uh, we keep on pretending it is. What we need clearly is, first of all, we need to have uh, an answer to the ongoing debt problems. And by the way, Greece, Greece might be the loudest of all the countries, but it's not the biggest problem. So we need to have an answer for the unresolved debt crisis in Europe. And we also need to have an answer of how we deal with the rigidities of adapting different economies uh, in a fixed exchange rate system as the euro is. And we have not come up with the answers. And therefore, in my view, we have actually made the problem even bigger uh, in the last weekend. And um, we need urgently a change of course if we want to keep Europe together. Jacques Rupnik, do you agree that uh, it's a bad day for Greece and a bad day for Europe and that we're kicking the can down the road? Uh well, it depends what you if you look at it from perhaps from a strictly monetary point of view, that might be the case. Uh, I still think that the, the, the deal that has been uh, uh, proposed uh, is an attempt, perhaps a final attempt. How many final attempts do we need? But a final attempt to reform the uh, Eurozone, because I think the, the deal, and there I agree with what has just been said, is not just a problem of Greece. The deal, hopefully, will open, will be such a shock to the system 
that the uh, Eurozone will have to reform and adopt possibly a much greater convergence in fiscal, budgetary and other matters. In other words, move to some kind of more, in, co in inverted commas, federal system. Uh, if that were not to happen, and maybe the political conditions are not ready for something like that, well then, indeed, uh, uh, I may agree with our uh, German colleague that uh, this weekend uh, simply postpone the problem and uh, may lead to uh, future crises and possible uh, disaggregation. I somehow hope that the shock to the system has been sufficient to uh, bring about major reform, not just reform of Greece, but the reform of the, of the euro system. Okay, think back to those heady days yeah. of, what was it, 1999, 2000, when we saw those first euro coins and bills uh, go into circulation. Uh, and you look at the situation now, uh, do you think that voters are, would agree to what you're talking about, which is a, a more federal uh, Europe being the solution? Yeah, we need a more federal solution, that is my conviction, but the conditions uh, are simply not there. The, the, the federal solution means more democracy, democratic control over money that is being spent. Federalism is not giving more power to bureaucrats in Brussels. Federalism is the basis of democracy. German Federal Republic was a democracy. Uh, United States is a federal system and democracy. So federalism means democracy. You cannot produce something like that without democratic legitimacy. And what we see in Europe is defiance by people towards the European system. That's why we have something that is both necessary and impossible uh, politically. And uh, that may be a definition of a tragedy, but we're not there yet. All right. Uh, and what we did see in the room or from what leaked out of it over uh, the uh, last uh, 72 hours uh, in Brussels uh, was a, a lot of finger pointing. At one point over the weekend, it seemed as though the talks had even failed. Even the German chancellor, after uh, coming out of those meetings early on Monday, said that the, uh, uh, this weekend will perhaps leave scars. We've succeeded despite the fact that the most important currency between us, that is, trust in each other, has been deeply shaken. All right, a, a lack of confidence. What can be done, Daniel Stelter, to restore that confidence? Well, you know, first of all, I would like just to elaborate a little bit on the question, do we need more integration? Yes, we need more integration. Is it realistic? Well, I think uh, given the fact that not only politicians start to lack confidence in each other, but also populations start to become more and more Eurosceptic, uh, I doubt that it will be possible to achieve. The first thing, in my view, to restore confidence from all politicians would be to tell us the truth. Because we talk about Greece, we talk about a few billion here, a few billion there. But first of all, we need to have an honest assessment of the um, debt load of Europe, which is not sustainable. And let me just tell you, my personal guess at least is that if you calculate the excess debt of private households, non-financial corporations and governments, we come up to an amount of 3 billion euro, uh, 3 trillion euro, sorry, 3,000 billion euros, which have to be dealt with, which is a banking union, which means huge monetary transfers and wealth transfers between countries. So if you really want to address the issue head on and to stabilize the Eurozone and fix it going forward, first of all, we have to clean up the past, well, let me call it mess, because you, know, you made clear in 1990, you remembered us of the coins and the, the, the banknotes being introduced. Just remind you, in the first few years of the Euro, everyone was very happy because we had low interest rates. We had a true consumption and investment boom going on in the Eurozone, basically spending on credit. And now we have to clean up you know, what's been left of this party. And therefore, we have to tell the truth. We have to say, look, let's sit together. Let's decide how we deal with the bad debt, which is, might be three trillion or even more, in a joint way, which means Germany has to pay more than others, clearly, being the main creditor in Europe. But, you know, fix it. And once we fix it, then we can talk about the future. Then we can say, OK, who is willing and able to stick to the rules which are necessary to survive in a monetary union? who is willing to participate in a transfer union, which of course means that for many, many years to pay more than you get back, which is part of a transfer union, which is fine. But first of all, in order to restore confidence, we have to have leaders in all countries telling us what is the price 
we have to pay for this project to succeed. We didn't see that conversation during the 2012 presidential election in this country, in France. Uh, we almost saw it, uh, but uh, then Mr. Draghi opened up <laughs> the cash of the European Central Bank and the debate was over because suddenly the debate between right and left about more discipline in the budget and more uh, uh, Keynesian approach to the economy suddenly uh, was overwhelmed or, uh, let's say, overshadowed by, by the uh, new context where suddenly uh, uh, money was available. But I think it is uh, interesting uh, uh, what uh, our German colleague has just said, that is, you maybe need, if you want to go further, you will have to clarify things. And what kind of European monetary union do you have in mind? Uh, do you have in mind where which something perhaps smaller based on strict rules to which everybody adheres to? Or do you have in mind transfer union? That's not how it was presented. And indeed, transfer union uh, uh, has a bad ring with our public opinion, because basically you're asking taxpayers uh, uh, to uh, uh, help countries that may be deserving a particular situation. If you start saying this is a permanent state of affairs, that may be a problem. What I'm concerned so is not just the financial problems. I'm the reason why the deal was done at the end was for political reasons. The politics uh, uh, took over and perhaps uh, thank God, because there are situations where politics matter. And that meant the cost of Greek exit would have been politically extremely damaging first. You have a first country leaving, who's next? Uh, uh, not just attacks by financial markets, but the whole idea of disintegration of the union might settle in. Secondly, Greece is an important country, not just because of its economy. Uh, it's tiny, 2%, not because of its history. I don't like too much the talk, oh, we must help Greece because it's a country of Plato and Aristotle. Well, okay, okay. That, I don't buy that argument. I mean, it's, it's nice, sounds good, but it's not very convincing to ordinary people. No, the, the argument is geopolitical. If you, can we afford a failing state on our doorstep with masses of migrants coming in from the Middle East right now? Masses. There's more in Greece than in Italy. Everybody's focusing on Italy. Tsipras going to Moscow and flirting with Russia and bringing Russian influence into the Balkans. Basic with ISIS in the south and the whole question of security in the Balkans. I would say uh, there is a geopolitical context which makes Greece more important than the 2% that it represents in the GDP of the Eurozone. And for now, though, there's the problem of a country that can feel a bit humiliated. Here's one uh, uh, viewer on Twitter saying people in Greece are shouting coup in response uh, to Syriza's offer uh, to the EU, which is, uh, severe as, which is as severe as the previous EU proposals. The former finance minister talking about a Treaty of Versailles, the one that the Germans had to uh, uh, submit to after World War I. Uh, today in Vienna, where they're taking part in nuclear negotiations with Iran, the French and German foreign ministers addressing reporters together this to show the unity of the Franco-German capital. This was after uh, uh, much was made of François Hollande's mediation with Greece uh, and the rest of Europe. But there is a lot of resentment, uh, even here in uh, France. There you see uh, Laurent Fabius and uh, Frank Walter Steinmeier together in, in Vienna. A lot of resentment that uh, we've seen, like in the front page headline in left-leaning daily uh, Libération, what's Germany playing at, uh, reads the front page headline. That's mild compared to what the communist-aligned party of the left leader said. Europe is adopting a new face, the face of the German government's brutality and omnipotence. Europe's problem is the German government, not the Greek government. Da Daniel Stelter, uh, of course, this is a minority po uh, party and a, a point of view, but there is this sense that... Uh, the Germans, not the Greeks, could be portrayed as the bad guys in all of this. Well, that's what I meant in the beginning with my statement that it's also a bad day for Germany because I think German politics uh, completely failed because uh, we end up, uh, we always paid, but you know, if you pay, you should be liked for it and not being disliked. So I think it's a, it's a proof for how the German government, unfortunately, the past five years completely follows the wrong strategy. 
The point is clearly the following. Um, the politicians have not acted. They have not done their homework in the past five years. The ECB, Mr. Draghi, as was correctly mentioned, has um, basically rescued the Eurozone by uh, promising to do whatever it takes and continuing to do so, because otherwise interest rates would be much higher. And so they gave time for the politicians, but they have not acted. And now we have clearly the situation where um, I would say, well, the difference between France and Germany is simple. The French, um, you know, I would say, well, we have to have a polit political solution to all the issues. And I would agree, but at the end, in the end, something has also to be financially feasible and economically feasible. And currently we are stuck in a situation where we hope that just by adding debt to debt and adding even more debt to debt, we can fix the problem. Um, I'm probably some Germans would say that's the approach of the French. The point clearly is, if we want to prevent Europe from falling apart and going back to the bad old days where we have hate between populations, we have really to ask, answer the question, can we fix the euro or should we rather abolish it? And if we want to fix it, we have to find a solution for debt relief and debt restructuring on European scale. And we clearly have to come back to a situation where countries decide for themselves what they do. Because the worst thing we can have is a country getting into trouble on its own for its own reasons. And let us remind us, Greece was in trouble or is in trouble because of their own mistakes until 2010. So the point really is we have to make sure that the politicians of the countries like Greece and Italy and Spain and Portugal and Ireland, they have to go back and say it was our mistake. And we have to clear up our mistake and not give them the Germans as a scapegoat to say we have to do it because the Germans want it. Therefore, we are in a very dangerous situation, and that's why I feel it's a very uh, bad process. And it's good to see that the French and the German foreign ministers now stand together and, 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 and uh, demonstrate um, how close they are. In reality, we are fundamentally apart. And this has to be resolved quickly. And this goes back to my point I made before, which means, first of all, we have to be open and transparent on the debt problem and address it. And secondly, we have to say what is necessary in order to get our economies working closer together. And this might be that probably not every country in the long term is ready and able to stay within, within the Eurozone. And just one last word. I personally think it's very clear to everyone that now, having had the discussion in Greece, we will have other countries either voluntarily coming back and say we want to leave, like Italy. So it's just a question of time. Jacques Rupnik. I, I think you, know, you can have a, a, a discussion about why we got into this situation. Probably it was a mistake to take Greece into the euro. That was the first mistake in the <laughs> uh, way back. Uh, uh, then uh, 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 many economists argue that it was a mistake to impose the austerity policies uh, during the crisis, okay. which have strangled the greed economy and made the repayment of the debt But is, even there, more is difficult. there a bigger problem? Uh, and that is that uh, Europe, when with. it was when it was built, uh, it wasn't built on financial considerations. And there's a fundamentally different view to money when you're in Southern Europe, when as to when you're in Northern Europe. Well, that uh, that may be that may be true. That uh, you know that uh, the uh, German, because of the experience of the interwar period with inflation have a much more stricter and disciplinary attitude towards the uh, so uh, towards the, the currency. Dutch, the... the French, for uh, uh, different historical reasons, have a different attitude towards that. But that's how Europe works. You know, you have different countries with different traditions. The Franco-German couple has worked well for Europe because it brought these differences to the service of Europe. When you found a Franco-German compromise, usually it was a compromise acceptable to all, not because they were the two big countries, but because they were different and they were finding a solution that was a compromise solution for everybody. It is true, however, that we are now in a very tight corner, that uh, 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 this is not, you know, bad bankers uh, doing something to poor Greeks, uh, not... Uh, 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 suffering under, uh, under austerity. This is taxpayers' money uh, that is being extended to Greece and for which democratically elected politicians have to account. And, the, and the that pressure, can only be done in a Eurozone, back to my argument, if we have a shared project, a political project, a share democratic legitimacy for that project. Right, if so we don't need, have that... We need to put the politics back into the deal. If people don't understand why we're doing this together... Uh, uh, they will not be prepared to pay for it. Jacques Rupnik, I want to thank you very much for joining us. I want to thank Daniel Stelter for being with us from Berlin. Stay with okay. us when we come back in part two of the France Vanguette debate. 
We'll be looking at uh, just how close we are to a deal with Iran.